these Zoas are beautiful. I think I showed them to you last time in the bubble algae video, but uh, that's not why we're here today. Look, Aquashella was amazing. Dallas, you guys know how to throw a party. I appreciate that, it was a lot of fun. But we're here today to talk about the mysterious, the elusive, the beautiful, the amazing. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Take two seconds out of your time, just check C. Have you subscribed? And if you haven't, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can be notified whenever I upload new videos. And of course, get me to that goal that I've set for myself of 25,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. This was my first time at Aquashella Dallas, and now I can officially say I have been to all of them. This all started in Chicago, I've been to those. Awesome, the White Eagle Ballroom, what you know about that? That's that OG Aquashella crowd. Uh, trigger warning, today we're gonna talk about a A, zoanthid b it's got a name and c it's not cheap which tends to really fire people up i promise you you will at least take something away from this video and understand i guess a little bit better of how the coral market moves from a hobbyist perspective and why the stratosphere zoa in my opinion is unlike any other strain in this hobby not a second to waste let us go back in time to where this all began. Thank you, future self, for that amazing intro. Not a problem at all. Okay, so we are getting ready to meet up with my friend Akil, better known as Dr. Reefer on Instagram. He brought something very special to the show this year. I've heard about this Zoa in the past. I've seen pictures of this Zoa, but I've never actually seen one in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see a stratosphere zoanthid today. The mystique of the stratosphere zoa, how to take care of them, cutting, things like that, and why this thing is so dang expensive. There's only one way to start this journey, and that's to head in to Aquashella. Let's go. I go by Dr. Reefer on Instagram. So I've been doing freshwater since like I was like 10 years old. And when I came back to the US after my medicine, so I just started getting into corals more. And um, so I spent like 1400. I bought it from A1A Aquatics in Florida, Seth. And it's like that holy grail of Zoas, basically. So I just, I have a 50 gallon at home and I just collect Zoas in this, on the side and torches in the middle. So yeah, it was like that Zoa that I couldn't find and I just wanted it since Shane Becker was having it back in the day and Michael Vargas, the photo of uh, the stratosphere back in the day, I've been you know, wanting it. And when I got the chance to get one from Seth, it was like, my credit card didn't like it, but it's fine. <laughs> it's been growing really well and the mother's like, the size of the frag plug so I like I like bigger size strains I think they do well for me personally so I'm happy with it you may have seen Michael Vargas walking around different shows taking beautiful pictures of coral the dude has a setup unlike anybody else and he takes amazing photos of coral and actually had the opportunity to shoot the stratosphere zoanthid Let's talk to him. Michael Vargas, uh, Michael Vargas Photography. I uh, take a picture of the coral. Man, it's the whole aura around them. You know, you look at them wrong, they melt. You know, you, you touch them. Do anything, anything other than let them be. They'll, you know, they melt. That, that's, you know, that's what they're known for. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So Shane, that was the first time I've ever seen them in person. What was interesting about that, you know, they're on a disc and he's like, are you happy with the shot? Did you get it? I'm like, yeah, they're all right. He goes, you don't sound too sure. Are you sure? I'm like, you're okay. I mean, what's wrong? I'm like, well, the angle's kind of not too great, you know, but I, I'm okay. He's like, what do you need? I was like, I, I don't know. Can we cut them? Instantly just, you know, got his bone cutter, started chipping away, cut them off the disc. I'm like, holy, holy crap, you know I mean? You know, I'm worried about them melting. I'm like, oh man. And 10 minutes later, we're photographing them. They're, you know, they get published in the magazine and 
it, it, that was a cool experience, so, you know, it was, it was interesting. MichaelVargasPhotography.com, um, check it out. Can I really see myself buying one of these things? If you're waiting for me to tell you that at the end of the video, it's not gonna happen. Not in the cards in this video. But I did want to dig just a little bit deeper on this zoanthid. So I called up my friend, Shane Backer. Shane knows high-end coral. He has some of the most beautiful, most colorful acros in the business. But yeah, we're basically a hobbyist that turned into a business. And, you know, we basically focus on SPS, zoanthids, mushrooms, torches, ganis is a new one. You know, we're just, we're just addicted to collecting new high-end corals and, you know, what's better than finding a new species to collect. Would you consider the stratospheres to be the pinnacle of zoanthids? I really would, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing behind the zoos and the, the secret nature of them and how they melt, like they're definitely the hardest to keep. Well, we've seen a lot of zoas come with a huge price tag. For instance, um, I think the one that is most recent is probably the Grandmaster Krakatoa. Uh, they came out, they came out hot, like $1,500, $2,000 a polyp and literally was at Aquashella Dallas and saw them for $50 a polyp. So why do you think the stratospheres keep their worth or their value over something that is, I think, just as spectacular in a different colorway. You know, the GMKs are beautiful Zoas, but what's the difference? Why do, why do the stratospheres keep their value or hold it? Well, I mean, the first thing is that it's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. So someone can put a $1,500 price tag on whatever they want, but if it doesn't actually sell for that price and it's not worth that, so it's truly worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And I mean, the last stratosphere that I sold, which was maybe two years ago, I actually sold it for $3,000 a polyp. Woo. It, I mean, and, and here's the thing, you know, you say why, right? Because someone was willing to pay for it. And, you know, the more of something that there is, the, you know, the, the less it's going to cost to buy because there's multiple avenues to buy that that specific coral. So with the GMK, which I was also a part of releasing that originally, um, I think we auctioned one off like the first one on like a Facebook group. And, you know, at that point, the auction price set the price of like, I think it was like 750 or 650 that we originally sold them for. And then that coral is a very fast grower. So once it, you know, once we released it and put it out there in the hobby, it like, you know, people started growing it and it became more available. But with the stratosphere, we weren't seeing any of these things coming into the United States for probably three or four years. So it was in the hands of the hobbyists at that point. And the growth rate on them was extremely slow and the death rate on them was extremely high. So in the last three to four years, just to find stratospheres was very, very hard. And then even if you found them, people didn't want to sell them. So that's why the price was so high is because there was just so much demand, but there were very little uh, people that were selling them. So it's just, it's really supply and demand is what it comes down to. Do you treat these zoanthids differently than any of your other polyps that you've got? No, um, those polyps are all in the same system with all the other polyps. And at low light, I think they like 40 par. I like to see when they're stretching a little bit. Um, but in, in terms of parameters, I mean, we keep it in the same system with all the other stuff. Nothing specifically special there. It's, it's an amazing zoo and I don't think it needs any special parameters. And if you're willing to play the casino and invest in one, if it does grow, it'll be a great investment for the resale value. The, I mean, we, we have a live sale uh, pretty much every 30 days is when we sell our stuff. And during between those 30 days, we really don't have any for, anything for sale. We don't have any offerings. And the best way to find us is through social media. Uh, if you have social media, if you love Facebook, Google SBB Corals on Facebook. Uh, search SBB Corals on Facebook. If you like Instagram, SBB Corals on Instagram. If you love YouTube, SBB Corals on YouTube. Most of our promotions are on Reef to Reef as well. And we will let you know on Facebook and Instagram about any up, up and coming sales. Let me know what your favorite Zoa strain is. And if you don't like using names, just say, I like the, the pink ones or the purples are my favorite or Zoanthids are stupid. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I realize that this is not everyone's cup of tea. I also understand that there are a lot of opinions when it comes to prices of coral, uh, zoanthid names or any coral name. 
I get that. I understand it. You are entitled to your opinion. If you would like to vent about it, there's a whole forum down below in the comments section. Just go for it. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Once again, I'd like to thank Fritz Aquatics for sending me to Dallas to see the stratosphere zoanthids. I've said it before and I'll say it again for me, these shows aren't necessarily about going to see all the coral and all the aquascapes and things like that. It's really to connect with you, to connect with uh, fellow hobbyists, to be able to talk to somebody else who can have a conversation about coral. So thank you. I'd also like to thank Scott Crow. Who not only is a great guy, but also has like 82 fish stores in Rhode Island. Which means that there is, in fact, a fish store on every single corner in Rhode Island because it's a very small state. Like the smallest of all the states. Check out their videos on Facebook, on YouTube, Instagram, OSA Media, Ocean State Aquatics. I'm excited because I've finally come up with a plan. So I'm gonna keep the frag tank. It's gonna move this way. It's gonna come up on the tile just a little bit further. We're gonna move the lagoon out of here. I'm gonna take the livestock, put it in a different tank that I have. And then we're gonna put the new tank right behind me. We're gonna do that hopefully in the next video. We're very, very close. So thank you for watching. That's it for me. I will see you in the next one. This is what a convention center looks like when there's nothing in it. Isn't it crazy? It's huge. It's, what would you do with this space? The best mini golf course ever with like the longest putts. There is this cart over here. Do you see this thing? Gosh, I really want to ride that. I really want to ride that. Ah! Thank you for joining me in this super empty convention hall. I guess I'll go back home now.